Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Interferences in the working and protrusive excursions of the mandible are easily determined. Both carbon paper and dental tapes provide relatively good markings from rubbing contacts with light pressure. Observe the movement pattern as the patient moves the mandible to the right from centric occlusion and back to centric occlusion while maintaining tooth contacts. Place green casting wax between the teeth and repeat the same light contact movements to see if there are any interfering contacts on the working side. Wax is placed on both sides of the mouth and the balancing side interferences are checked by having the patient move laterally. Initial contacts are on the cuspid of the working side and on the lingual cusp of the second left maxillary molar on the balancing side. With carbon paper between the teeth on both sides, the patient is asked to repeat the movement. The marks of initial contact are on the cuspid on the working side and the buccal incline of the lingual cusp of the maxillary left second molar on the balancing side. In the mandible, the balancing contact is against the mesiolingual incline of the distal buccal cusp of the mandibular second molar. The same right excursive movements can be repeated on the articulator. The working side contact on the cuspid and the balancing contact on the second molar are evident. The same movement is repeated with red dental ribbon. The markings indicate rubbing contacts on the right cuspid and the lingual cusp of the left maxillary molar against the left mandibular molar and cuspid. The heavy balancing contact should be removed first. The buccal incline of the lingual cusp of the maxillary left second molar is reduced. A centric stop or holding contact at the tip of the cusp is maintained. The ledge on the cuspid which triggers a jerky movement in working side excursions is also removed. Carbon paper is used to mark these contacts in the mouth. First for the balancing, and then for the working side. The grinding is done on the buccal incline of the lingual cusp of the left maxillary second molar. Grind with an inverted cone stone and leave a holding contact on the tip of the cusp. The ledge on the right cuspid, responsible for the jerky movement, is ground slightly to provide a smooth guidance. The initial and end contact on the cuspid are left undisturbed. Casting wax is again used. This time, the patient is instructed to move the mandible to the left from centric occlusion.
The penetrations indicate working side contacts on the cuspid and the first molar, and balancing side contact on the right second molar. The contacts are recorded with carbon paper. Rubbing contact is seen on the left cuspid, and the distolingual cusp of the mandibular first molar. On the balancing side, there are contacts on the buccal incline of the lingual cusp of the maxillary right second molar against the lingual incline of the distal buccal cusp of the mandibular second molar. Left lateral movement is then repeated on the articulator. The working side contacts are on the left cuspid and the left first molar, while the balancing contact is on the right second molar. The left lateral movement is repeated in the articulator with red dental ribbon. The rubbing contacts are seen on the left cuspid and first molar of the working side. The balancing contacts are against the right second molar. In the mandible, the working contacts are against the cuspid and first molar, while the balancing contact is against the right second molar. The interference to smooth working excursions on the buccal incline of the distolingual cusp of the left mandibular molar is eliminated. The heavy balancing contact on the buccal incline of the lingual cusp of the right maxillary second molar is also eliminated. A ledge on the left cuspid is reduced to provide a smooth gliding movement in lateral excursion. Grinding in the mouth follows the same pattern. The buccal incline of the distolingual cusp of the mandibular first molar is reduced. Then the ledge on the left maxillary cuspid is eliminated. Notice that the initial and end contacts on the cuspid are left undisturbed. The heavy balancing contact on the buccal incline of the lingual cusp of the maxillary right second molar is eliminated. Wax is again placed between the teeth to record the retrusive guided lateral excursions from centric relation. Right excursion is recorded first. Notice the even contacts on all of the teeth without perforation of the wax on the balancing side. This means that no further adjustment is needed. The left retrusive lateral excursion is tested in a similar manner. Again, notice the even contact patterns in the wax with no perforations on the balancing side. Wax is now placed over all of the teeth, and the patient is instructed to perform protrusive movements. The anterior teeth penetrate the wax evenly. There is no penetration posteriorly. This means that we have a satisfactory incisal guidance. The movement patterns in various combinations of protrusive and lateral are now checked to see if they are smooth and unrestricted. The condyles are palpated while the patient repeats the combined protrusive and lateral movement to detect any jerkiness in the joint.
The sharp edges on the anterior teeth are smoothed and polished to provide optimal aesthetic as well as functional results. The ground surfaces are polished with a rubber disc dipped in 2% sodium fluoride or 8% stannous fluoride solution to prevent sensitivity and to provide smooth gliding surfaces on the teeth. All occlusal surfaces should be carefully polished to enhance the comfort following the adjustment. The teeth are palpated to test for lateral impact when they are tapped together firmly. A final test for smoothness of all eccentric movements is done with a hand on the patient's chin. The temporal mandibular joint is also tested. The centric and eccentric occlusal contacts and chewing patterns are tested with the patient sitting upright. The patient should be able to chew with equal ease on both sides. She is free of pain and discomfort. Her occlusion has multi-directional, unrestricted smooth gliding contact patterns. Balancing side interferences have been eliminated, and satisfactory incisal and cuspal guidances have been created. The objectives for occlusal adjustment for centric as well as eccentric excursions have been fulfilled. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.